call, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is a memorial tribute to Ms. Mrs. Doris Evans. Mr. Smith, would you like to? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Evans passed away last month. She was a, a uh, long time, 30 year employee of the system, working at several different schools in several uh, positions. A delightful person to know. Uh, three children, all of whom graduated from the high school. Her, uh, one of her sons was our first ever uh, African-American appointee to West Point. It was really, really a fine, fine family. Uh, and uh, it was a nice uh, service for Mrs. Evans. So we just want to mark her passing and pass along our thoughts to her family. Thank you. Uh, do we have any citizens' comments? None. All right, do I, have a, do I hear a motion to adopt the agenda? Motion to adopt with one amendment. Okay. Uh, under Roman 7, a new small a, uh, GHS projects. All right. Got a, a motion, an amended, to adopt an amended agenda. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. A second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor? Motion carries. Motion to approve Roman 5 and 6. All right, got a motion to approve Roman numerals 5 and 6. To hear a second? Second. Got a second by Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? Motion carries. First uh, item under Roman numeral seven, Mr. Niles, to give us an update on our facilities. Uh, and I believe everybody has uh, the power printed PowerPoint. Uh, okay. Uh, Difficult I'll, questions are appreciated, board. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, I'll go through that real quickly. But just before we start uh, start there on the high school, let me share with you. Uh, someone asked if I would just give a real quick brief on where we are with the modular middle school lease. Uh, modular has already been all disassembled. Uh, several units have already been moved out. Uh, they're actively re removing the rest of them. We hope by the end of this week, next step would then be to repair all of the paving. And then we'll have the paving restriped. And uh, we've been working with Ms. Freeman on how she would like the uh, bus lane striped along with some additional parking that we uh similar to what we did at middle school west so that's going well there middle school so just to let you know we are switching back car rider versus bus rider at that site um the way it was designed when we put the modules in it kind of cramped the buses where we had to switch the buses to the front so that'll be going back to how it was before correct all right. And then the last thing, there's there's an ongoing beautification project there at Middle School, School East. I'll be bringing that forward to you at our next board meeting uh, for some approval. But we've walked that campus and looked at it and got a couple of bids uh, for a beautification project, actually for a couple of our campuses. Adrian, on back to Middle School East, can you also at your uh, leisure figure out a construction schedule for the uh, subdivision, uh, new approved subdivision yeah. on Lakeview Drive. But that will generate some construction traffic yeah. and eventually residential traffic. Thank you. Sure will. So as we look at our high school, uh, high school projects, uh, we're opening up with phase two of the, of the pavilion. Couple of uh, drone shots about where we are with the pavilion. These shots were taken about two weeks ago. Uh, so now, if you went over, 90% uh, of the roof is already done. They've already started on some electrical underneath, as well as uh, some blown insulation. Uh, so it's coming along really well. The next shot just shows shows it again uh, as it uh, relates to phase one of the practice field. <laughs> Student Activity Center. 
been scooped, student activity center come along well. Again, these are drone shots. Uh, overall building, we're about, uh, about 75, 80% complete. Uh, we've already started installing casework. Uh, we, we've got gym floor material inside being acclimated to the climate. Uh, we've got, we hope about another week we'll start seeing wood going down. Uh, furniture is already, uh, some of it starting to arrive. We've already selected three different sites there in the building where we'll actually store some of the furniture as it comes in. It was better for us to receive it as opposed to putting them on hold. So we're going to go ahead and receive it. We've been working with Will. Then uh, first week in July, his crews will start assembling and putting furniture in place. You can see on the, the image we got pulled up here, these are the two bridges. One coming out of the ROTC side on that third floor, the one on the right coming out of the band classroom on that third floor. Uh, it really it has really cleaned up the area in the back to having that walkway uh, coming across the back. And if you'll notice from when construction started, uh, down here in the bottom right, if you remember, we had the ADA ramp that went down between the alumni gym and the three story uh, academic building there. Uh, it's the 21 that's 20 years old. Now that has been extended a little bit more where we've got more space to be able to do it. So they built it back, made it a little bit uh, wider, and it really connects that third level uh, to the back side of this building. It's it's looking really good. If you if you go out there now, you will notice this area now has concrete uh, between the Valentine Center and the Student Activity Center. And so there's concrete now in between and the track. Uh, they've been working for a couple of weeks now on the track. And so that whole area now is just is shaping up, shaping up very well. On the bottom right of this photo, there's a maze. Uh, what, what, what is level with the third floor of the uh, main building? So you can't see it. Uh, this right here is level with the third, or the, uh, excuse me, the second floor of the Student Activity Center. And then you keep coming down and winding down. Uh, then there's another uh, ramp here the building that will get you into the back side of the hub but then there's about two more uh continuation of these ramps that will take you to the third floor so it's a i believe it's the same well, the it's number of turns it had correct. before it's just that we created these opportunities to go to the, so the sidewalk in front of the <laughs> third floor <clears throat> not a direct access to a back door on the third correct. floor level Will it eventually be covered? Uh, there's not a plan right now. Uh, I think as we get in, we'll look at it and assess it. And if if needs canopy, then we'll come back to you to add that. The prime, once this is finished, where is the primary access for students? to the student activity center. Yeah. Depends on your involvement. Right. If you're banned or ROTC, it's on the back side where the bridges are. If you're using the gym or the locker room space, it's coming up from the hub in between the cafeteria meeting center and the, and the building. Coming up along that right side. When the new building gets complete, they'll be able to come up this back side as well. Right, and this back side will be the primary I guess public entrance that would come to this side here. We know parking is going to be an issue for a little bit. Once the new building gets complete, uh, we'll have parking behind there. Right now it's used as a lay down area. We'll also, uh, once we're able to open the student activity center, we can remove the modulars from Century Place where there's four modulars uh, that they've been using uh, for the last couple of years. Right. So once that's done, we'll, we'll have more parking. There's very, very limited parking in front of the Student Activity Center, primarily handicapped parking. Uh, but for the rest of it, you'll have more access than ever before from the uh, senior parking lot up top, but then also uh, from those lower lots in Central Place. And that's what we can say there on the front. Uh, if you went over now, about half of that's been poured. You'll see the arches for the Bruce Miller archway. That's all been poured. Those columns are in place. And uh, they're continually working on uh, on curb and gutter, uh, so they continue 
come on around continuing with David in all those common areas. The next one is three-star academic uh, building. And again, uh, we just want to show you where we were as far as uh, the pad being on grade and the uh, building pad site on the next one. Uh, we've got a couple of views that shows uh, from Century Place, all of this, the middle of the road, this area that's been dug up, that's where uh, uh, we had to extend city sewer uh, coming from the new building that will actually pick up a lot of uh, sewer from this building, from the kitchen cafeteria. But then also, they've now also increased and put in new storm drain outlets and inlets so that again, from that entire site, uh, it would pick up all of the storm water before it uh, would go over to the lake. All of the horseshoe, uh, those trees have been removed. You'll, you'll go over, you'll see part of the uh, green area there, horseshoe has been dug up. All of that's dug up and next two weeks we'll get new curb and gutter. As this building comes online, all of the handicapped parking that's up front, it'll be moved down to the entrance of the new building because that's where the new administration offices will be. Yeah, if, you, um, if you drive out there now, it is an absolute mess. Yeah. It's bad. Thankfully, we're not in school. Right. Mm -hmm. And they are working working on it. Like I said, next two weeks, it'll have all the curb and gutter put back. Uh, the street will be uh, back paved over, uh, cleaned, and uh, everything will be back opened up, horseshoe back opened up. Uh, prior to school starting. And just to give you uh, just your information, the superintendent overseeing this project was the same superintendent who oversaw GMS West. And so we, we Jim's been doing a great job with us over there and they moved him to this site ever since we got the CEO for GMS West. So he, he knows what we like. He knows how we communicate. It's been, it's been great so far. Estimated uh, time for a CEO on the student activity center. Um, we hope by the third week in July, okay. we're hoping. Uh, and, and again, Jim did a real good job. We got CO uh, for the uh, West School. We got it really about uh, three, three and a half weeks prior to their time limit. He really pushed that project and it got all of the approvals and everything on time. Now he's he's really overseeing good. the pavilion right now and helping Zach finish up that student activity center. So it's Keep your fingers crossed that all right now it comes down to the flooring um, and some of the shipment issues we've had. Keep in mind, when we get the CO, we will not be ready necessarily to unveil it to the public until some of the other pieces can really be put in. So the target is for our students, at, students to be able to be in there and use that facility. And then we'll get the opportunity to expand its opening. Uh, we'll do so. But it's looking good. It is indeed. Um, our Cudgel Garden project is still on, uh, on, on, on the schedule. Uh, we're hoping to uh, meet with City of Gainesville and our contractor, HF Kitchens, on next week. And they're actually going to get started doing some grubbing and clearing uh, next week. Uh, one thing that City of Gainesville asks us to do is look at the amount of uh, hardwood trees that we would be taking out, see if there's some that we can leave, and then also uh, maybe it presents opportunity for us to add some trees and go, we're getting rid, rid of all of the underbrush, all of the kudzu, but we might have some opportunities to uh, plant some new uh, new trees, such as uh, crepe myrtles or something like that. That's already along Pearl Lake's Parkway. Any other questions, Mr. No? Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right, next up is uh, Mrs. Patton with the uh, FY21 audit results. Good evening. Pleased to present um, our FY21 financial audit results. We've actually received the audit um, audited statements and the audit report, and there were no findings, material weaknesses, or any deficiencies identified during the audit. This audit did include uh, a compliance audit for school nutrition and um first so. this is four straight years of the clean audit and then another stellar stellar audit kathy and so 
congratulations to you and your staff. Yes, definitely. She's been sick. Well, we had the exit exam, what, five or six or exit intermediate? Five or six weeks? I'm wrong on that. Yeah, we've been waiting on the process this year for some reason slowed up quite a bit. They were all learning about ESSER funds and when the when the state started to distribute those funds, school systems were all over the place and how they use those funds and what accounting protocols they had in place. And they were very complimentary about the Gainesville City used them the same way we use all of our other federal funds. And so it made, I think it made their review easy compared to some of the things that slowed down their processes in other districts. This year, three at low risk dollars. So we're, we're in a good spot. I hope you'll we'll be able to get on the calendar early again next year and be ready to go. I want to um, say thank you to Mrs. Fowler and Mrs. Shayway as well for their work. Was it unusual to include nutrition? No, they always select uh, at least one. One department. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions, Mrs. Beth? Thank you, Mrs. President. Thank you. Next, uh, Mrs. Collins. Good afternoon. We are a few short weeks. Um, from welcoming our new um, employees. Um, and so our new teacher orientation or new staff orientation will begin on July 27th. They will report to their schools. And then the second day, we are going to invite them to Bobby Bruins Stadium for breakfast. You, of course, are invited to come join us for breakfast out at Bobby Bruins on that morning at um, 8 o'clock or 8.30. Well, no, 8 o'clock at the bre at breakfast. And then they will finish up on Friday. Um, so um, please join us. Any questions? It's a little different from what we've done the last couple of years. Uh, we usually, uh, for the last number of years, had lunch on that Wednesday as a group. <clears throat> that is unbearably hot <laughs> at Bobby Groom Field at City Park, and not everybody can get under the tents. So we said, you know what, give them that first day in their schools with their administration, with their new teachers. Let's get them first thing on Thursday. That way they can go and and get some other stuff knocked out at the school. So we have a, a slight shift in that. Uh, so Thursday morning at eight uh, on the 28th. Uh, so if I read that uh, address, 830 Green Street is actually the address of the Civic Center. Oh, is it? So would you clarify that before you start distributing? Okay. Uh, and it's okay to say Bobby Red Field, because mm -hmm. that's, that's the signature name. Okay. But the, uh, the 8 Green Street is actually the Civic Center, where we have been in the past. Uh, I have a second question request for you and Ms. Kevin to I'd like to really beef up the promo of our free approved payroll deductions. Right, okay. And we have not in the past promoted those, uh, particularly to new employees. Um, and this is this is the time, I believe, to include a robust promotion. And we've got an onboarding coming up with them on Monday via Zoom, so we'll be sure to add that. Ms. Pethel. The only one we kind of hold off on is the United Way because it falls in line with their, their campaign in October, but for reach and fame. Definitely. Sure, but don't we have employees who contribute year round to United Way? But they signed up in, in October. Yeah, it's during that campaign. Okay, yeah, I understand that. Okay, I, I would like for a robust uh, promotion then for reach and for pay. We will Same. let them know on the 27th. Yeah, good. And I will add that on the uh, reach, the last number of years we we we. Uh, even out three in the last three years, we did three recipients because we have two middle schools that are going up to four. Uh, so we can have two from each school, which means there'll be a little bit more on the fundraising side to help support four versus three. Okay, we have done more than three. We did five the first couple of years, yes. More, mm -hmm. more than better. We're capped at five because of the size system. Any other questions in this, Don? Thank you. Thank you. All right, Dr. Williams, you got the first two action items. All right. 
Over the last uh, little over a week, we've held the three required budget hearings. Uh, we also piggyback on that with the required millage rate hearings. So the first item that I bring is the adoption of FY23 budget, all funds, including the supplements. One thing I would like to add is Ms. Pethel and I went back and looked and on the Department of Revenue, it only shows the historical millage rates back to 1999. We're at least lower than we've ever been since 1999. So over the last 23 years, we're just the lowest it's been. Uh, so we can look internally at what it was uh, before that time. And one of the things to point out is we're blessed that the collections for East Floss have been great, that when we bonded out the money for our projects, there was an opportunity for us to uh, rely on property taxes to pay off that bond debt. But our collections are so great that that bond millage rate is zero for us. And that's the second straight year we've done that. And that was a promise that we'd made uh, to the community when we asked them to support it two years ago. So decreasing that millage rate 0.2 allows us to bring forth a budget that has an increase of 3% for all employees, an additional 2,000 uh, for our certified staff, uh, school nutrition personnel have, have new scales, uh, bus drivers have new scales, just a great opportunity to see what's happening in the larger community, state, and, and the country regarding some of the inflation. Hopefully we're able to help support some of our employees with some of those rising costs uh, that they're having to, to spend right now. So with that, uh, I'd like to bring forward the FY23 budget. All right, any questions before we hear a motion to adopt? Are you gonna repeat yourself on village? I'm gonna do that just for the military. We're gonna take a vote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it's always kind of tricky how we have them combined a little bit. We two separate votes. So the first one is the budget. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Got a second by Mr. Mitchell. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor? Mr. Carries. All right, Millage rate of six point one nine five helps us get to the budget you just approved. Your motion to approve. Uh, no. Two, uh, three comments, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, it's important to note that the during Dr. Williams' tenure here, our millage has that began in 2017. Our millage has dropped uh, 0.66 or two thirds of a bill due to good management. Good staffing, good management, healthy collections, but primarily good management. I'm very thankful for that. That's 0.66 drop just during his uh, administration term. Uh, a little concern here, if you look at the five-year digest there, there's about eight $805 million increase in our net digest, which is a good, healthy increase. There's, there's a sizable increase in the extensions once again, which is always a concern. Uh, 1.4 billion extension. <coughs> That's, that is a concern. Finally, let me point out this. When every property owner got a um, notice from Hall County Tax Assessor's Office last month, it essentially is an estimate of what your taxes are going to be when they do in November and December. It had an error, a significant error on school, on city school tax estimate because the assessor staff used an old millage rate. And that was from two years ago, correct? That was the 2020 rate of 6.614. Yeah. And we're nearly half a mil below that. So the public should know that error or to recognize that error. And when the actual bills come out in the fall, you're <coughs> going to see less assessed than what was estimated. That's to say some of the decrease in half a mil decreases. But 
but there was an error on the whole county tax assessor. Um, they'll, I'm sure they'll be notified of our passage and get it correct from the, from the billing cycle. So, and, and we did confirm that the 2021 millage rate was used for billing last year. Okay. So it was just uh, an oversight of the leaving 6.614 on there. Okay. With that, uh, recommendation and comments of motion to approve. Got, got a motion by Mr. Smith down here, a second. Second. Got a second by Dr. Randy. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion carries. It's definitely made financial statements. Yes, for May, uh, our revenue support at 4.4 million for the month of May. Our expenditures are 6 point, about 6.1. So our revenues uh, under expenditures was 1.6 for the month. Our year to date revenues are at 75.2 million, and that's 96.4% collected of our. Revenues for the month year to date for the month of May. Year to date expenditures at 70.5 million, and that's 91.8 percent of expended uh, expenditures for, uh, for the budget. That leaves our fund balance for May at 26.4 million. Um, this time last year, we were the fund balance was 23.5 million, and we were 94.1% collected on revenues and 89.6% of expenditures. Splash so receipts for the month of May, 985,000. Any questions, Ms. Chuck? Uh, do you think the uh, projected fund balance for June 30, 22. I don't know if you think projected will hold as to where you've got it. It will hold. I like that chunk. <laughs> well, it's a nice carry forward. It is. It's a good help. I think she's carry forward. We beat our budget for what, past three years? Is that about right? All right, that's just echoing Mr. Smith's sentiments from before. Um, do I hear a motion to uh, accept the financial? So moved. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Got a second by Dr. Williams. And any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Pepper. Thank you. Uh, finally, uh, Mrs. Jones with the personnel report. Hi, I would like to ask the board to approve the personnel report as submitted. Yeah. And board members, this does include, we did not have the meeting two weeks ago. Um, so this does include the names that would have been on that board report. Uh, so it does look longer, but this is a little over a month's worth of hires. So is Middle School West pretty full now? We have, do we know how many positions we have left, Ms. Collins, that we have not filled? Um, we, we probably have about 12 positions that is still it, have to be filled. Is that that system-wide or is that is that's system -wide. System -wide. So one of the oh, things, so system-wide, system not yeah. just, okay. no, you're looking at one or two per school. Uh, one of the things that, so the cutoff was June the 15th. If they had not given us a resignation by June 15th, they basically have to get a promotion uh, somewhere else in order to get out of contract. So this gives us a chance now to have the next six weeks to really shore up our staff. We occasionally will let people out after that time if we have a suitable replacement that is uh, as, as good or better. All right, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the personnel report? So we got, approve the personnel report. We got a motion by Mr. Mitchell, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Dr. Ramsey, any other questions or comments of Mr. Jones? All those in favor? Motion carries, thank you, Mr. Jones. We uh, discuss two things to uh, bring back forward of uh, some kind of report or update on our patient screening plan. So we 
member of the Lions Club gave us the two vision screeners uh, during the pandemic where we could hold them out for our elementary students. So we are, I think, as well as had some plan to we'll get that started again. Secondly, uh, is there a decision? If you made a decision on Walton Harbor zone? Tentatively, it is uh, centennial, uh, but we're waiting for some of the final numbers of number of students. So it's either going to be centennial or Bear Street. Okay. Have they started moving in? That first phase. I don't, I don't believe that. Looks it's finished. Close to being completed. I don't right. believe they've been yeah, made. It looks finished, but I haven't seen any cars or anything. They are doing the vision screening test. Yeah. So, so there's a so the vision screening is always done uh, anytime somebody's doing a referral for an IEP for special education or at the request. Uh, what the Lions Club gave us was a um, a device that you just stick straight up to the kid and it does it automatically. And so our goal is to go in and, and do that across in mass to, to find oh, out so if there the are other So the teacher has to issues. recommend right for now, a student to have that. Parent, completed. teacher, someone, yes. And so this allows us to go in and just see if somebody may have some vision issues that otherwise we didn't know, and then get them in the right, point them in the right direction. And she, uh, known well as our health coordinator had experience with these screeners when she worked at Hall County. The uh, Lions Club gave Hall County some screeners first. Then came and they were so she, she's good with it. Yeah. Mr. Chair, one thing I would like to add is we added on the discussion items the GMS ribbon cutting uh, information. We will be getting more details together. Um, Beautiful campus, as you can see there. I encourage you to drive up in it if you see the uh, gates open. Uh, we do have the team practicing there now uh, during the summer, during the month of June. Tenant, well, it is scheduled uh, for Monday, July the 18th at 4.30. We will move our July the 18th, 5.30 board meeting to GMS West. So we'll have um, a brief moment of time uh, to, to have a few comments do the ribbon cutting, and then after that, uh, we'll have our monthly meeting at 5 30. Heather wants to speak. <laughs> I have one other uh, question for your, I guess, cabinet. Uh, with uh, recent uh, vaccine approvals for all children, essentially all children, uh, Will you all be talking and thinking about uh, uh, vaccine uh, opportunities or offerings for elementary? So I do during school hours, during school or weekends or whatever, whatever can work to reach the masses. We'll, we'll re, we'll re uh, assess it. We discussed it last year. And by the time it really became available, most of the families who wanted their child vaccinated already had that opportunity out there. Yeah. And so it was kind of a, it would have been a lot of work not knowing what to pay off. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll read back. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty busy uh, because there's new, new approvals even this week. I think. Never mind. Six months to five. Yeah. Six months to five. That's the latest wave. Yeah. Yeah. Age five and over were already approved. Yes. Yes. Anyway, let's revisit that. Thank you. That's all. <coughs> Any others? The motion to adjourn. So move. Motion by Mr. Smith. Got a second by Mr. Smith. Will all those in favor? Please.